Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, today we're gonna talk about soldering and making your own cables. Okay, just a couple considerations. Number one, don't buy an expensive soldering gun. Number two, don't buy an expensive soldering gun. The one that I have is uh, a Weller. I think I paid $40 for it and it works really well. I think what you're looking for is something that delivers at least 35, 40, 50 watts. You'll be fine. Um, the Weller that I use, I like. I've had it for, <clears throat> I've been soldering for 10 years with it and it's, uh, it's just been fine. Okay, number three. I would stay away from solderless connectors. I see these kits that you can make uh, your own cables without using solder. I haven't had any luck with those and I've seen other people struggle with them as well. So I would just stay away from that. Just learn how to solder. It's an easy thing to learn. Number four, the cable that you can buy in bulk is so much better than a regular guitar cable that you can buy off a shelf. Um, Canari cable, GS6, I like to use that. Megami's really good. Belden is fine. Um, they're basically all about a dollar a foot and you can get the quarter inch connectors for about two dollars, you know, give or take. So for under twenty dollars, you can make yourself a really good uh, 15 foot cable that's gonna last for a really long time. It's gonna be super quiet. I tend to like the GNH quarter inch connectors. They have a copper core that goes right through the center of its one piece. I think they're really well made, but I use Neutrik as well, and I've used Switchcraft, um, and I've used Amphorol, which are really good. Any of those are gonna work really well. The only thing I would double check is make sure it fits your guitar or your bass really well. In other words, if you have a Strat, you probably want a straight plug that goes in your guitar, not a right angle. So when you buy your connectors, just think about that. And also, you know, double check, because in some cases the connector might not work well with a specific instrument. For instance, this is a Padula, and um, the connector on here is a Switchcraft uh, barrel type connector. And they really don't do that well with a lot of connectors. It, it kind of only wants to see a Switchcraft. So I, I use a, a right angle Switchcraft on this one. Um, and the way to check that is if when you plug it in, is it really loose or is the connector uh, cutting out when you push on one side of it? That'll tell you it's not a good fit. You'd think all these are exactly the same um, dimensions, they're not. So different connectors have like little discrepancies in their in their measurements. If you own a Fender and many other bases, you probably have a Switchcraft jack on it, you know, the old style that worked just fine with pretty much anything. But just double check that before you buy like a hundred plugs and and same with your effects pedals. I remember back in the old days, a certain uh, boutique cable company came out about 20 years ago and their tips on their connectors would actually unscrew and people would get uh, the tip of that stuck in an effect pedal and basically you'd have to remove the whole jack, throw it out and put it, install a new jack. So just make sure you have good quality connectors that are not gonna like unscrew. Also look out for connectors that are made out of plastic. Like this whole part here should be made out of, of some kind of metal. Uh, this is a GNH end and it's all nickel metal, has a copper core. And this is an Amphorol and they're really good too. Um, and it's all metal. And the reason for that is I've 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 seen plastic connectors, I've had them in the past. They hit the concrete, you take them out, you're doing a gig and they just shatter. So it's really worth another 50 cents to make sure that your connector is completely made out of metal. Okay, the last point I wanna make is just how to care for your cable. Don't have people walking all over your cables, like at rehearsal, or live on a gig, you know, try to wrap up your cable right after the gig or just try to avoid from stepping on the cable because you'll break the shielding. Well, the cable will still work, but it'll be a noisy cable because that shielding is keeping away electromagnetic interference. By the way, I am not a soldering guru. I am definitely a novice. Uh, the way that I solder works for me. If anybody out there has some better tips, please write them down below and we'll all learn from that. Okay, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel because I can provide more information for you and we'll get into a lot more stuff. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get started. You're going to need an X-Acto knife, which is basically a razor blade so we can cut through the insulation of the cable. Some kind of poker. Uh, it could be a screwdriver, anything. Um, something that's kind of pointed. It's going to be easier to get through the shielding with that. This is called a wire uh, solder tip cleaner. And I like them better than... You can also use a wet sponge, but I think this is better because it doesn't cool down the um, soldering iron. It cleans it really, really well. And that's a soldering station. You don't really need that. Um, if you want to get one, great, but you can just plug the soldering iron right into the wall. That just kind of varies the heat. You have like a little gauge on there. Um, and But it's not necessary. Okay, here's your cable. I like GS6 Canary. 
it's made in Japan. It's it's really great cable. The capacitance is great, but also the shielding is is really good on it. It's really flexible, and the shielding is is like this big net, and you'll see that as we open it up. Those are wire strippers tool. Not absolutely necessary. You can get away with it with the exacto knife. You can still do it. That is a heat sink. I use that to hold down the ground wire sometimes. That's a quarter inch plug by G&H. I really like them. That's a right angle plug. Today I'm making one straight and one right angle, but I'm probably just going to show the first part because it would be too long a video. That's a plastic little shield inside that, that quarter inch, so make sure you have that. That's alcohol. You need um, almost 100% pure alcohol to clean the parts really well and also takes away any rosin flux, any extra flux that we have. So that's great stuff. Um, it's not regular rubbing alcohol, and, and the cotton wipes are to help you with that. So what I usually do is I cut about an inch um, off. If you're new to this, you can cut a little more than that. Um, I'm using, um, I'm trying to make a studio cable. I call it a studio cable because it's, it's basically, you know, 10 to 12 feet long. This one's going to be 12 feet long. Uh, because, you know, the longer the cable, the more you're going to start losing highs after a certain while. I mean, people have even said there's a big difference between a 5-foot and a 10-foot cable, believe it or not. But um, um, I feel pretty good. I don't want a super long cable. I just want something when I'm recording in the studio or even at home. Just a cable that's long enough for me, you know. Um, I have a couple that are really short, like 7 feet. But this is good for, you know, I call it a studio cable, but it's you can use it on any kind of gig, of course. And so now what I'm doing is I'm just scoring the outside of that with the X-Acto knife. And I don't want to cut through the wire, which is the shielding underneath. I'm just getting through the insulation. I'm being very gentle about it. I'm just kind of scoring it and then slowly playing with it, bending it. You'll see like a little section that might not come out. And then you just touch it with the razor blade and it'll come out. And then eventually you're going to pull that off. And there we go. Now look at that shielding. That's that shielding is way better than much. There's other cables that just have the wire kind of wrapped around it very loosely. That shielding is going to keep noise and interference, electromagnetic interference, out of your signal, especially if you're playing like a, a, a any kind of bass that's passive, because you're going to pick up everything because it's so little output. So you want that to be you want that shielding to be as good as possible. Now Megami is is really good cable too. Megami. But I like this, I think the shielding on this is the strongest, on this Canari cable. So this is the one I use, GS6. Canari, uh, Megami is really good for studio because it's super flexible. You can get it to tight spaces, but for guitar cables, effects pedals, stuff like that, I use this Canari. It's, it's not too big, and it's uh, very flexible and very, very, very strong. So this is the only part of the video that I'm going to speed up because I'm just trying to keep the video less than... <laughs> But I don't want it to be too long for you guys. So on this, I'm just slowly... It looks like I'm going really fast here, but, I, you know, this should take about a minute or two. Just take your time. You don't want to break those strands off. You just want to slowly go through there and then unweb that. That's probably the only thing I've ever heard anybody complain about with canary cable. It just takes a little while to do this. But you're getting this safe, this net, this this Faraday cage sort of concept going on here. So, you, so it's a really good for that, you know... It's something you might have to put up with, but who cares? There you go. And then I'm just kind of... Now I'm uh, going to get ready to tin that a little bit. And what that means is um, I'm measuring right now here to see how far down I want to go. I'm, I'm going to probably only use about 20% of what that is right there. And what I'm going to do now is it's called silvering or tinning. I'm putting some solder on there. Yeah, it's better to use the coil one. I'm just showing you both there. And by the way, I'm adding this narration because I like to do this outside and you're going to hear birds and cars go by and stuff. I thought it'd be more quiet if I just do the voiceover. So now I'm taking some solder and I'm going to tin this up. And I'm just putting uh, the heat on the wire first and I'm adding the solder to it. You don't need a whole lot. You'll see it'll just sort of spread when the heat is, is, you know, you want the hot, the soldering iron pretty hot, first off. It's better to be super hot for a small amount of time than to be kind of not that hot and you're keeping the iron there too long. But anyway, I'm just kind of getting that together there because when I solder it together, it's going gonna, it's gonna to connect a little easier. It's going to adhere a little easier, being that it's tinned first. 
Now I'm cutting it down because um, it doesn't have to be that long. And now that black stuff on, on the on the main um, core of the cable, that's another installation. I'm going to take that off. And as you can see, I'm using wire strippers for that, but you can do it with the X-Acto knife too. And that pops right off. And now the plastic, I have to take that off to expose the core. So, yeah, just you could use the X-Acto knife if you needed to. And um, there we go. And I'm measuring. And I'm kind of I'm kind of measuring where the clasp is on the left there. Um, that's going to grab the cable part. That's really important that you have enough there. So I go a little bit, a little safety, maybe a couple millimeters at least. And then the top um, is still too long, of course, but I'm just kind of measuring how far I want to go with that. And now I'm going to crimp that. And again, I'm crimping it just enough to where you know I found the size on that particular pair of strippers that fits perfectly if you notice I, I pull the tip off this you got to be careful you're not stripping off half the wire so if you do you're gonna have to start all over but it's you're gonna do that when you first start so don't be too hard on yourself but that's easy to fix you just start the cable all over again it's good practice anyway so you probably lose about an inch of cable so you're not you're not wasting that much uh, this is part of learning. And now that's a pan of ice I'm putting that into there. I have these little rubber kit covers on it so that it doesn't scratch the uh, nickel plug. And I'm just measuring again, I'm just double checking. I, I'm going to sort of, I want it to go through the top of the plug so that there's, a, there's some leverage there to bend that down a little bit after I solder it. So on the straight cables, I start with the top one. And now I'm tinning it again. I'm just putting a little bit of solder on there. And once that done, once that's done, I'm going to probably measure it again now. And then I'm going to cut it. And I want it just a little bit more than where the hole is, so that when I put that core in there of the cable, I'm going to go down into that hole, and then I'm going to bend it. So it almost has like a press fit at the, at the beginning. So before I even solder it, it's pretty solid on there. Bending the, the plug down just a little bit too. You just don't want it to touch the bottom part of that plug because then it'll short out. Now I'm using rosin flux. And rosin flux is amazing because, you know, a lot of the sort of solder has it built in. It's in the core of the solder. But I like to add it because it makes soldering so much easier. So I would definitely get some of that. It's really cheap, a couple dollars for a bottle of it. Um, and now I'm soldering, and you want it to be nice and shiny, and you'll you'll see the solder will just kind of like flip, it'll just kind of do this little thing, and um, kind of you'll see it's just really shiny. It looks good. So that top is done now, and if you see that, that's really nice. Now what we want to do is. If you go any farther, is grab uh, some Q-tips or any kind of cotton swab thing that you have, and I'm dipping it in that alcohol, and I'm cleaning off the excess flux because that will corrode. You know, 10, 20 years from now, it'll start eating into the rosin. So, uh, excuse me, into the solder. So I, I like to clean that off any excess. If it's just, if it's, it, it should look like honey on there, and you want to take that off. If you see some cheap cables, open them up, you'll see though they're eating away at it after a long time, some older cables. So that should look nice and clean. You can see there by a side angle there what I did. And now I'm putting a little rosin on there. And it's, I'm, put, I'm trying to aim for in between the bottom plate and the wire so that those contact points have that extra bit of rosin flux on there. The heat sink is to keep it the wire down. It's like having helping hands in a way. And um, also if it's good to use heat sinks if you're worried about the heat transferring up the cable and melting the cable. But I, I don't keep it on there that long, so that's not going to happen. Okay, so that's basically how you make the cable now in the end. Um, if the cable's really hot, wait. I mean, it shouldn't be, but, you know, um, wait before you crimp the cable. We're going to get to that next.
But right now I'm just, again, I'm cleaning off that rosin flux. Too much of that is not good. Okay, we should be nice and clean now. Looks really nice, nice and shiny. That's a nice solder job. That's what you want. And it's strong enough already. It would take a lot to pull that off, but we're gonna put we're gonna crimp this cable. And different connectors have different ways of doing that. I really like these GNH connectors. I think they're really great. They're made here in the US and they have a, a, a copper core that's solid all the way through. Okay, so that's nice and firm. Let's see that. And now we're going to put the heat shrink tubing on. And the way that I do, I cut um, how much I want, and then I fold it in half to make a crease. It's really cheap, this stuff. It's You can see they're 229 for like six feet of it. I get it over Fry's Electronics, but you can order it online too. I, I really do this... It's a little bit of strain relief, but really what it is is just to mark my cables so I know, you know, the red ones are a certain length, the green ones are a certain length. Um, I make that crease and I use an X-Acto knife. And this way I have two exact, see, by folding in half and then you, you get exactly the crease right in the middle of the two. So you have two equal parts that way. And now I put the heat shrink on. I thread it, you know, onto the cable, of course. And now I just use a paint stripper. You can get a a heat soldering gun, you know, wire, excuse me, um, heat shrink gun. Um, I find the paint stripping guns are, are made better. They're actually more durable because they're used to, you know, take paint off. They're a little bit hotter. You have to be careful, but, uh, and they're cheaper usually as well. You can get that anywhere. And now you just kind of, I'm putting it on, it's probably on high right now. And I switch it on low. And, um, that's just kind of, at the end there it's already pretty hot you don't want to go too crazy with this as soon as it starts closing up that's enough if you go too crazy it'll kind of you'll see the end of it kind of crack and harden and then you don't want that that's not good and you get it pretty good and there you have it that is 90 percent there okay and this is all in real time so you can see kind of how long it takes but you don't want to the thing is you will probably cook it the first time you'll have to kind of learn how far you can go with that all right and that's that's the g and h and there's a copper core that goes all the way through it's one piece i think that's really solid and if you do happen to bang your plug really hard it's not going to snap off it's going to bend maybe you get through the gig so i like that it's really well made um, and they're, and they're actually not expensive at all they're on the cheaper side of plugs. Yeah. Make sure that uh, little plastic thing is in there. It's sort of an insulation so it doesn't short out. And then you just kind of thread it through the cable and screw it on. But wait, there's more. Okay. That cable looks good. Now we want to do is I don't, I hate when those connectors become loose. So I use a little bit of, of Loctite super glue. I put about a half a drop, not that much on each side of that, kind of towards the bottom of the, of the threadings. That's me uh, starting off the uh, <laughs> super glue just in case there's a hard piece in there. And just put a little bit and then about a hundred degrees over to the other side, put a little bit, just a tiny bit. You don't need that much. And then slowly put it on there. You want to get it in those grooves. And it should go in there perfectly. If you put too much, it's going to stick off. You know, it's going to come, it's going to ooze off the sides and then you have to clean it off. And if that happens, it's really easy to do that. You're just going to get some um, of that alcohol that we use to clean the flux off and just put it on a paper towel and just kind of uh, wipe it down. That's a good way to clean any kind of electronic thing. Man, this, this alcohol takes everything off. It makes a really good contact. That's what you want. You know, I didn't want this video to get too long, so to finish the cable, just do the same process on the other end. One more important thing. Uh, make sure you put the connector on and the heat shrink tubing before you start the other end of the cable. If you don't, you're going to have to cut off that newly soldered end. And I've made that mistake a couple times when I first started soldering. One more little uh, extra tip. 
if you don't have the money to get a pan of ice, or if you're just starting out, just use an effects pedal to hold the plug in place while you solder. I did that for a couple of years, and um, because those pan of ice are expensive. And if you don't have a heavy pedal, just you, you can use any kind of small effects pedal, like an MXR flanger or something like that, and just gaff it down. It'll hold the jack down. You can solder really easily, and Bob's your uncle.